Okay, well I'm really pleased to be here with another of our sponsors for the day. I'm really pleased to introduce Pete for you from Larson Howie. And uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about my least favourite subject in the world, <laughs> but that must be a case with lots of business owners that you meet. So yep. we're going to talk about things like protection, insurance and things yep. like that, aren't we? So could you just tell us what Larson Howie does? For a uh, we're an insurance broker. We specialise in providing insurance and IR35 uh, related services to professional contractors and freelancers. So a stereotypical guy being an IT contract on a day rate of a fair few hundred, hundred pounds. We provide them with the insurances they are required to have before they can take up those um, con- contracts. And obviously those, those guys are a massive part of the flexible workforce, so they have to have these insurances in place before they can commence. So that's what we do. Not very exciting to a lot of people, but we, we love it. So, so, so what, what sectors, what, what, what kind of things are the people doing, if you like, that um, you're actually covering? tend to be IT, business management. Um, we even go down to things like oil, oil and gas. Right, uh, we okay. have a, bits there where people work on the oil rigs painting, repairing the legs on those things, uh, their p- public liability for that. Um, so it's a vast range, but predominantly what we class as white collar trades. Um, okay. Further down the line, we'll be branching out into blue collar trades as well. Okay. Uh, how long have you been established? Uh, we were formed in 2015, trading since 2016, but myself and the other directors of the business, we've been in the industry for 10 plus years each, uh, at other competitors. So were you one of the founders of Larson now? I was, yes, yeah. I left my previous employment uh, quite quickly, shall we say. Yeah, um, yeah. Went into competition with them, served a restrictive covenant, so had a nice holiday for a bit, um, and have come back out and uh, done it again. So. so you're absolutely right for Micro Business Matters, though, yes. and you understand about what, what it's like to exactly. get in from the start of a business, because yeah. that's what we all are. We're all people that have started our own businesses. As, yeah, just speaking remote. to people this morning, people who provide accounting software, things like that, I've yeah. had to do that, go yeah. out and source it, yeah. uh, learn how to start a business up, the, the regulatory requirements <laughs> for that. So it's perfect for us. We can help guys, and we've been there ourselves, and we're on part of that growth curve as well. Yeah, fantastic. Even the business is like we've just been interviewing Charlie Mullins, uh, oh, yeah, yep. Pimlico Plumbers, yeah. And uh, uh, but you know, one of the great things he supported all our microbiz matters days because everybody grows through, even the ones that got big businesses yeah. like him, they were a micro business, so they yeah. understand what it's all about. So, what would you say is the yeah, I mean, you said rightly, it sounds a bit boring kind of <laughs> protection insurance, but what are the uh, the benefits, if you like, of actually making sure that you are protected and, and how important is it really to a, a micro business? Uh, from our point of view, and not just as a sales point of view, it's vital. Um, for the guys we deal with, the contractors, if they have a claim made against them, yeah. professional indemnity, for example, that our limits go up to £1 million cover, that's what they have to, or start at £1 million, they have to have that. You imagine a claim comes in, legal fees, rectification fees could be easily a quarter of a million pounds no small business on their own can afford that so it's a case of the odd time a claim does come in it protects those few people who do it it stops them from losing their business their live livelihood if they're not a limited company a sole trader their house um, and their assets are on the line so it basically allows them to continue trading and takes the stress away and minimizes the time if you are starting out on your own or a few of you, yeah. um, if you've got the stress of a legal case on your shoulders for six months, two years, the costs of it, the distractions, we've spoke to people and it's took away from their focus on their core business. So from our point of view, it's some, it's a necessary evil, the insurance. You always think it's not going to be you. Yeah. If it is you, <laughs> yeah. the word of uh, the what we get, what we hear back from people who've had the claim is we would have probably ceased trading without it. So it's got to be be there. The main thing I'd get across is that people think they've done nothing wrong a lot of the time. A court case or whatever it can be, a claim can come about from just frustration from another party, a frivolous claim. So it, you don't know where these claims are going to come come from, and they will unfortunately. Yes, not you be may not have done anything wrong, exactly. but you could be involved in all that time on legal. Yeah, stuff. You, 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 mentioned Char- yeah. You, you mentioned Charlie a minute ago. Some, some people, some people claim some bad nasty people around do actually just claim in the hope that you'll settle 
there's that so well. that you're not we, yeah, yeah. We, we operate unfortunately in a very litigious society coming across from America that's how they tend to do yeah. people make a livelihood from making claims um, solicitors on poor people driving uh, poor cars um, they make a lot of money from it they're not cheap so there is an element of the unknown to it and it's yeah. a case of basically spending a little to protect against a lot the small chance it occurs it's vital you've got that protection and the expertise there for various insurances and other elements you can face as a business on a day-to-day -day basis it could be that H HMRC want to investigate you they're a law to themselves for want of a, bet bet no, a better I phrase know, that's right absolutely um, so if they investigate you they can do do that they haven't got to suspect you've done anything um, they want to look at your books and records check everything is okay that can take a long time if you want to deal with that yourself as a business own owner you can do yes that's going to distract you quite a lot so we hopefully allow uh, businesses to continue as they are uh, take the stress away minimize risk um, and allow them to hopefully flourish to be a big business in many years time and not have to start start again and your business is in a very competitive marketplace isn't it really yep. so what would you what would you say to a micro business owner not to nine employees under two million turnover why should they come to Larson Howie um, because we're similar to them we work for a company the directors that grew from a small business to a big multi-million pound biz business uh, we know what that growth curves like we know what support is need needed we're there ourselves and what we've differentiated ourselves on is the customer service side we don't want to be a big business that just sells an insurance a faceless biz business whilst you can buy it on online um, without speaking to us we're at the end of a phone we're willing willingly speak to people doesn't mean we sat there we're lonely we just sat there waiting for people to ring up but we want to help people we take enjoyment and pride in seeing businesses grow helping protect them um, and we want to be their sort of like trusted partner. As and is that why you've on. sponsored Microbiz Matters Day? Because they're an important part of your... Yeah, it's something we're passionate about as well. Yeah. Um, we want to be involved in the relevant air areas. Um, we like to get involved, go out, meet people, meet par partners. Our view of how we grow our business is just word of mouth referrals, being known as a preferred partner, speak to these guys. Um, that's the route that we take. We don't want to be a big faceless cor corporate yet. So. And you know, and this has all come about because you know our head roadie for yep. accounting, the wonderful Elaine Clark. And uh, how did you get to how did you get to know know her and uh, accountancy people? In fact, Ed and I seem to have met a lot of accountants today, don't we? So, yeah, <laughs> rather a lot of accountants. So I don't, don't know accountants why. and insurance I think is a wonderful mix. I think that probably is because of Elaine Clark, actually. <laughs> so we must have a word with her about yeah, so, no, There's right. actually an interesting story there. Um, we met through Twitter, which is oh, probably right. quite modern, um, quite bizarre. Well, this is all in Twitter, yep. then, so yeah. yeah. Um, we put a tweet out there that Elaine liked, um, and from that, she actually emailed us saying, I'm actually looking for somebody who does something similar to you. Shall we have a chat? Uh, and it went from there. So purely me tweeted, not to Elaine, just a generic tweet out to the masses. And she came out from that. Uh, and Elaine's great. She was actually our first partner um, that we dealt with that introduced his clients to us. Yes, so fantastic. there's a bit of a sort of, it's nice for us that it's that first one. She's been great promoting us. So if she's help, helping us, we'll help her help things like today so yeah. it's a reciprocal thing who says social media doesn't work <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. if and you're expecting an exciting story of we, <laughs> we we go back 10 15 years it's unfortunately the modern way of it was a tweet it's fantastic <laughs> no i think it's great and, and I, th I think you know it's what we know is that how, i mean we couldn't have created micro business yeah. matters day and enterprise rockers and everything we've done without social media yeah. because you can't get that kind of reach and it's and it does lead to relationships so yes. that's absolutely fantastic and one of the things that uh, is a recurring theme that we say is like um, micro biz owners should be concentrating on two things customers and cash flow yep. kind of thing and obviously we see accountants and bookkeepers who are actually referring yep. people to you mm -hmm. as the uh, micro biz owners advisor of choice yep. basically very very important to yep. them so that they can just concentrate yep. on the customers yep. and cash flow and it's a bit like having you know 
you need things like professional indemnity often you're able yep. to win the customers as well don't you I mean it's yep. not it's not just about protecting yourself it's actually about part of the actual trying to market and yep. sell yourself you know if you yep. don't have professional indemnity um, that sends a a pretty it's, weird it's message a big warning out, sign, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's a big warning sign that there's no safety blanket should the worst occur. Yeah. Um, I mean, not there's very, very few people actually need to claim on professional in, in, yeah. uh, in, in, in indemnity, hence why they see it as a necessary e evil. But those that do, it's worth its yeah, weight in gold. Um, and something you, you said previously there that Mike of his owners see we know accountants and solicitors as they really trust those guys yeah. we want them as an insurance broker to start hopefully trusting insurance brokers as much as well I'm not saying we're the poor relation we're probably the, mo the very more boring relation in that sort of thing yeah. but, um, but you develop you are developing a relationship yes. with the business as it yep. grows as it changes which is important yeah. you know yeah because you want people to understand your business don't you in, in providing exactly. protection yeah, yeah I mean with things like em employers liability that's rated on number of em employees turnover etc often on a retrospective basis we need to work with our clients to explain that to them to make sure they're covered as they grow they're not uh, they've not got any insurance that isn't fit for their means that won't cover them if they suddenly expand we need to work with them to make sure their policies react to that and they're insured for it um, if they change a contract as well uh, a lot of our, our clients work on a six-month contract they might go somewhere else after six months the requirements for each might be different so we'll help them review their con contracts when they're yeah. in uh, that stage and we'll work with them on that so yeah so we hopefully provide a valuable service um, along the lines of solicitors and accountants okay one tip then finish off with Chris. one tip yep. one tip in terms of uh, uh, to a micro business and uh, okay I realize that I need some insurance what, where do I go? How do I get hold of you? Uh, ourselves, visit our website on online. Uh, that's the easiest way. Everything's available on the homepage, indicative quotes. Um, and the one thing I'd say is don't skimp on insurance because it will come back to bite you eventually, unfortunately. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. And thanks Pleasure for sponsoring our event. Great. Pleasure. Thank you.